organization. Having been a realtor for over 30 years and coming from a real estate family in Oakland, I uh, grew up in a family where my father was a realtor, his father was a realtor. I remember I have seven brothers and sisters. And when we were little, he lined us all up in the bathtub and would talk to us about real estate. I was about five years old. Painting railings, going out collecting rent. So I approach this conversation from the perspective of a salesperson. So I would like to talk about two aspects of um, the salesman aspects of it. One is how to get a presentation. Every day I work for myself, I have to, what my father used to say is make the cash register, cash register ring. I have to go out and find clients, bring them in myself. And that's a large part of what we do. And I look at this as we have a product and we're trying to sell our product. And you're my clients. The product is part of its product and part of its marketing. The second part of what I would like to talk about are some of the lessons and principles that I've learned and that are really helpful for me in conveying uh, the message that I want my clients to understand, uh, kind of the psychological underpinnings of sales. So we'll start with the first. So um, to how many of you is it interesting and important to learn how to get a presentation? Does anybody? Okay. It was very important for me too. So this is something that I feel might, um, I might be able to share. How to find speaking engagements. Number one, start with your friends and relatives. So I started with my mom. It's a great way to start. She told me it was the most wonderful presentation she's ever given. <laughs> Even though she's voted for every Republican since her age. And then I gave it to my eight-year-old nephew, who just like, it's my uncle, it must be true. So it was really um, built up my confidence. Then I went into the schools. So there's elementary schools and middle schools and high schools and universities. Uh, each of which has a different opportunity. Many of them are looking for speakers to come. Andy and I um, actually presented to my alma mater high school in Oakland, Bishop O'Dowd, uh, and the teachers there are really enthusiastic about bringing in people other than just the teacher. They want the students to hear from somebody else, so that's really good. Now, if you do that, make sure you tailor your presentation to the appropriate school age. So when I gave it to an elementary school, one 12-year-old girl got up and went like this. Isn't this all just a little political? <laughs> 12 years old. So I'm thinking, okay, I might want to tailor this to somebody who's 12 years old. So uh, think about your audience is really important. But there's lots of opportunities in the educational arena. And then social service clubs, Rotary Lions, Kiwanis, they're always looking for speakers. Uh, there's pretty much these clubs everywhere you go. You just need to find out where the clubs are, find out who the person is that is responsible for booking uh, speakers. I've given talks to, to most of these, and uh, they show up because that's why they belong, is to show up to hear speakers. Now to be fair, some of them are not necessarily um, real receptive to the message, but that's an opportunity. It's like with Annie's saying, you like to talk to people that ne don't necessarily believe what you believe. But there's lots of groups here that uh, are looking for speakers. Community groups, libraries, and meetups. Uh, we've given to the libraries, for instance, uh, Steve is here from Sustainable Lafayette. We usually meet in the Sustainable, or the new beautiful Lafayette Library. It's got a beautiful reception area with movies. And they, too, put together lots of community events oriented to the public. It's just super easy to call them up and say, I'd like to give an event. Um, and meetups like this, I mean, every city now has meetups and if you find some group, whether it's a bicycle coalition or hike the lake day, clean the lake day, those are uh, ripe for giving the talk. And they're very um, findable, discoverable. And then seniors, retirement centers. Uh, I like retired retirement age folks because they have a lot of experience and they're really serious about the topic. They really want to know what type of earth are we leaving for my grandchildren. It's really important to them and they will show up. So my sister just this week moved into Rossmore out in Walnut Creek. It's a retirement community. It's big. It's 3,000 units. And so I was asking the folks there, do you have any kind of activities for seniors? And they said, absolutely. We have speakers that talk in our community center 
every day or every week. And so you just gotta get on their schedule. And again, it's, it's easy because it's a built-in organization. They have a place, they have people that show up, and they have people that book speakers. That's what all of this is. You go to somebody that books the speakers and they'll take care of bringing in the people. Businesses, many folks here um, have given talks to the businesses in the, in the Bay Area that are, again, they have opportunity, they have space like this, they have luncheon hours, and they do the advertising for us. We don't even need to bring in the people, we just need to contact the people and say, we'd like to give it to your, uh, to your staff. And more and more of the companies are kind of requiring it. I put New York Life on here because the insurance companies are the ones that face the biggest ecological uh, threat and risk into the future. And a lot of them don't really understand this. They don't get this kind of training. But they have infrastructure in place that allow uh, knowledge because they need to know it. <coughs> Government agencies, these are areas uh, pretty much at every level that if you know somebody in the government, whether it's a city, a county, state, regional, even neighborhood level uh, community groups that are government oriented, they are often sponsoring events and you can get into their speaker series or just on their panels. And it helps to start in pairs. So Peter and I have given many presentations together. Uh, we're really effective together because, and with Andy too, Andy can talk about the science, Peter can talk about citizens climate lobbying, some of the political activity, and then I talk about it from kind of a business perspective of uh, what businesses are doing, what communities can do. And when you work in pairs, um, not only does it give a perspective, a different perspective of viewpoints, but if you forget something, I can talk to, turn to Peter and say, what was that guy's name again? Oh yeah, Al Gore. <laughs> so we help each other with some of the information. That's turned out to be really effective. But mostly it's fine. 